Okay, we're back here with this coyote. Remember we uh, skinned him out yesterday, or her out. I'm going to sharpen my knife here quick. But we're going to go ahead and uh, get the ears turned and uh, get that tail out of it. I'm going to do that before I do the fleshing on the main part. I'm going to make sure that I can see this here. Remember I put a little back inside the hide a little bit. That way it won't dry out. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, get her turned inside out here. Get these ears turned. We've got the ears right here. This is the back side here. You can always look at those and tell which way you got to go. Now coyote and fox ears are real delicate. You wouldn't think they would be, but they are. There's a cartilage here I'm getting under. So when you put your ear tool in there, if you don't do it with an ear tool, you got to do it all the way by hand. And that just involves turning it inside out as you go and just doing a little bit at a time. But if you're going to do any amount of trapping in that and want to do your own hides, get one of these tools here. It goes right in the ear here. Just put some pressure on it to get it up in there. And just press down easily to spread that apart. Now be very gentle. Like I say, a coyote's ears, all you got to do is look at them and it seems like they tear on you. So I go very gently up to the end. You can finish the edges as you get done, when you get done. But anyway, I'm getting this turned back, right side back now. Okay, let's see. Just gonna get something so I can get that ear turned inside out like that. Then if you guys get close to the edge here, just go ahead and you can peel that back till you get to the edge. Be very careful though. You'll end up with a hole in it. Just like all the rest, when you see that white membrane, you're pretty safe to cut. Okay, we got one ear done. You can go ahead and trim off the cartilage and that now. Set that aside. Get the meaty stuff. Just like that. You got your ear turned. Now we'll go to this one. This is the back side of the ear right here. When I do it, I get a little bit of working room. You could force that up there if you want, but I I prefer to have a little bit of working room here. And you can feel that cartilage right there. So anyway, I got I got a little bit of room there. Don't forget your tool. Just put it in there gently. Just like a deer, only you got to be so much more careful. And if it's been froze a long time, the ear will be dehydrated. You're better off trying to uh, rehydrate it before you do this stuff. Or do it all by hand. Don't use this because you'll end up putting a hole through that. You can see we're putting pressure on it right there. The skin is just like paper thin. Well, it's thinner than paper, really, right there. I'm almost to the very edge. I'm going to go sideways and opening it up that way to get a little bit out toward the edge. And I just use the back side of that. If you miss a membrane, that'll keep it from coming open. You see that there. I 
So anyway, we get this here done. That's good. Now what we could do is we can do. Let me get my other uh, board here and a fl this flushing tool here. What we want to do is get that head up on the the head up on here, just like this. I'm in the eye right here. Remember this eye here come out with everything? We got to get a lot of that membrane off of there. Because remember, we're going to try to sell this and we want this to be a. There's a really a nice coyote, so what I do is I just split the eyes just a little bit. I usually. That way, when they rehydrate it, they can go ahead and finish that up. I get it as close as I can and still. I flesh around the face. I usually use a knife, but now we're gonna we got the nose here and the lips. We want to get the lips split, so I go right here. Just go right under this uh, smooth membrane of the lip, the inner lip. Just like so. If you go too deep, you'll cut the hair follicles off for the whiskers. And we don't want to do that. We want to keep those whiskers on there. So this is kind of delicate work too, because you don't want to go through the lips if you don't have to. This is the corner of the mouth here. So we're just going to go ahead and and here's the bottom lip right here. So we're just going to go right around the edge here. Go very gently. Don't worry about this bottom lip, the very bottom lip. We'll deal with that when they get ready to mount it. There's not much to work with there. and You can end up cutting that bottom lip off and you want to do that. So what we're doing is we're still splitting the lips. That way they'll dry good and if you salt it, you can get salt there. See that? We we'll just keep going. And see how we get that membrane folded down. We're right at the corner here. We're doing a good job on this, so this will be a nice premium coyote hide. getting right down on the inside of that up inner lip. If you get too close to the lip, you'll cut on the other side and then you'll have some sewing to do. You see how that folded over there? Just like that. And I'll tell you what, it behooves you to have your knife sharp when you're doing this stuff. Okay, and then we we got that nose out there pretty good. We'll leave that nose there, and now we'll work on the face, just fleshing out the face here. I'm just taking a little bit here. Now you gotta be a little bit careful here. The skin is pretty thin. We're just gonna go ahead and keep working like this. You can see the meat when you're working. You can see it here. So just make sure your blade isn't canned in like this. Keep it flat to the skin. Okay? Let me show you. I mean by the time I get done I'll have a couple hours of work in this skin. But uh is it worth it? Yeah it is. Because I got the hide, all I had to do is boil out the skull for the guy, and he'd give me the hide, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some money on it. I'm not going to get rich, but I'm going to make some money. Okay, we got this eye pretty good, right down to the skin, so we're going to switch over to the other eye here and uh, do the same thing. 
you have to get comfortable doing this stuff type of work if you're gonna do taxidermy work. You know, do it in your shop. Uh, if you go to hire it out, and now you can see on here that he got kind of busted in the head here with some BBs. That won't you won't see those. If it looks like it's going to be a problem, just throw a stitch in each one of these, closes them right up. Don't have to worry about it again. Well, I'm going to get this here. You want to make sure you keep keep it tight around where you're working. And like I say, watch the whiskers on the side here. If you cut too deep, you'll cut that follicle off. I kind of crosshatch it a little bit, but you'll cut that follicle off, and then you then your whiskers will fall out. And you got to try to put some artificial whiskers on there and stuff like that. So, but we're getting it. You see that? We're, this one here is a little bit different because he had a lot of blood under his skin, it looks like, from the, being shot in the head. You end up, or if they're snared, they'll end up getting blood or liquid pooled up on, on in their head. They'll have a real swollen head with a lot of water in there. And you got to kind of watch that too. But You can tell when you get down to skin here. This is the most time consuming part doing around the head. But you gotta do a good job. Just get that off of there. You see up under the ear they got kind of a gland here. Make sure you get that. And one thing about it, this is going to be dried, so when they rehydrate it, they've got to tan it. And they'll have to do their final fleshing on it to really get the details. You, you can't just, uh, if you're stretching it, it's kind of unreasonable to ask that it be perfect. Some people might, but to me it's unreasonable because they got to do the finish work on it. Anyway. Okay, we're getting this head pretty well done. we got the face here. You see the holes in there. Now that'll need a stitch, that one. You see it right there. So we're moving on the back of the head here now. Let's see if we can end up getting some of this meat off of here. Go ahead and put this ear in here. Turn this around. Put the ear in there and pull her down a little bit tight. And there's that piece of cartilage that was there when we split the ear. Let's see what we got here. Okay, this is the face. This is the back of it. So I'm going to end up turning this thing inside out and then we'll flesh the rest of that when we get done on the board. Now we're going to do the tail. Let me see. Where's our tail at? Right here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and split this tail. I'm going to get this down a little bit more. I'm going to split this tail out a little bit more. Let's go ahead. They got kind of a little indentation down their tail underneath there. And it kind of makes for a pretty easy cutting. And just get that skinned out a little bit more than what it is. I had a raccoon the other day. His 
tail had been busted. I don't know how. It must have got run over or something, but couldn't even pull the tail. I had to skin it all the way out because there's so much scar tissue in there you couldn't even pull it. Anyway, I'm going to get my uh, pliers and my tail stripper. It'll be just a second. For your tail stripper, I recommend a steel or aluminum one. I've tried the plastic ones. Here's the steel one. About five bucks where you can make one. Uh, I've tried the plastic ones. They don't work out so hot. What you do is you put that in there and get... The, there's three different size holes. So I'm going to go down to this one here. I, I split it out enough. We're going to try to pull this out. I'll grab this tail, get a good grip on it, and just put some leverage on it to pull it. And it did pull, so we're going to be able to pull this one. And once you get them about halfway, then you can finish them out, just like that. And then what we do is I want to make sure this tail dries. If it doesn't, it'll start slipping. So I'm going to split this tail all the way to the end. And uh, they're very easy to sew up, so people shouldn't get upset if they're split clear to the end. They look the same. But i, I got to get that in there. Guy's got a ton of cockle burrs in his tail. I'll get those brushed out when he's drying. Going almost all the way to the tip now. And if you don't, it'll it'll start slipping and you'll lose these hairs here. But you see this cockle burr here? You can usually get those by just pulling them apart. And taking them out. Find the biggest ones. Just pull the hair apart like this. And just, they'll come out. They don't like them in there either. They'll chew them out that way. And just pull them apart. Don't try to put a comb in there right away and rip through there. You'll rip hair out. You got to get most of it out of there. And I'm just kind of working this a little bit feeling for them. There's a big one here. And if they got them up in the body, you want to make sure you get them out before you flesh. Otherwise, you'll end up running a, you'll get a hole in your hide. You'll go over that with your knife and you'll end up getting a hole in your hide from that. Anyway, I'm getting most. I knew he was loaded when I picked him up. He must, the dog's running. And they probably run him into a briar patch or run through there. Anyway, you just kind of pull that apart. Man, uh, this one here, he's tough. Now, if you're tanning them, you can put them in the tan, and the tan will kind of help loosen those up. We've got a lot of the bigger ones out of there. And I'll show you the comb I use. It's a pretty good comb for this type of work. It's got real wide teeth on it. And then I can just go like this. And I can get most of that out of there. And see what I got out of there, the stuff that I pulled apart. So that's going to look pretty good. I knew it had a good tail on it, it's just trying to get to it. Sometimes, certain times of the year to get kind of, you start losing these guard hairs and you get a tail that's real funky. Doesn't look real, it doesn't look very fluffy is what it is. A nice black spot on the tail. Nope. Anyway, the tail looks a lot better now. Doesn't it? Nice and fluffy. 
I'll turn this thing inside out. Just like this. She was fat as a hog almost. I mean, that's, that, this time of the year, they're usually a little bit lean. Okay. So we got the head here. We're going to go ahead and slip this right down over there. Just like so, as far as it'll go. I try to get in the ear hole here. That kind of wedges it a little bit. Let me get a piece of padding here. Padding that I use to do bears underneath for the rugs. Make a pretty good uh, pad for doing this stuff. So I've got my fleshing knife here. I use the dull edge here. And just start pushing down. Up on the back of the neck. Really hard to get started. So Now there's a cockle burr right here. I can feel it. I'm going to stay on the other side of that. I don't want to... If I get too aggressive there... You'll end up turning a hole in that. See how I'm kind of getting down by this? It almost feels like you're hitting gravel, but like coon. I gotta call them old gravel necks. You get those big old boar coon, you run your knife over there and it just chatters. So we got this started. We'll take our knife when we get done and do this. Uh, this area here. Get it down where we want it. I'm going to go ahead and turn the hide a little bit over to the other ear and just twist it. Put my piece of foam cushion there. It's good aerobic exercise too. <laughs> no. Getting started is is the hard part, I think. The hardest part, getting up here around the head and the neck. Sometimes you got to watch it if you got holes like this right here. You want to make sure you don't uh, cause a bigger hole by rubbing too hard. If it feels like it's not going to go right. Or if it feels like you're going to get a little too much chatter or something in there and it feels like it's going to grab, just lay off that area and come back with the knife. Finish it up with the knife. It's real hard to get the stuff off up on the neck area. A lot of it's got to be cut off. And we'll do that when we go back to the other beam. What I'm doing is getting this right here. So I can get this meat between the legs. This is where we left that meat on. You want better off leaving too much meat on than to risk cutting that neck. Remember under the arms trying to get around there? If you go too shallow, you end up cutting that, and then you end up with a big hole. Now this is the arm here. And I've got... So we got that. Out here we'll go to the other side of the arm just like that there and just keep turning it around to get a new spot to do it. You can 
tell when you get down to that good fatty stuff, you can peel that fat right off of there. I'm darn shirt. Sure. Keep dragging it in there. I'll smell like an old coyote. Okay, now we're into the other arm here. Flushing beams make it a lot easier to do your hides. It's taking us a long time because I'm filming this. In reality, if you're sitting there working, you can do a coyote hide in about 20 minutes, I guess. Maybe a little shorter if you get after it. Clean your fat off as you're going. And then we'll turn around here again. Just pull her up a little. That reduces that tension on there. Just like that. It worked out pretty good, didn't it? And then we'll just pull her up here. I see a little fat right here I want to get. I didn't get. We're getting there though. come to a real tough spot you can cut it off with the other blade on this like this here cuts it right off but we're doing good get doing a pretty good job on this. This is going to be a nice hide to sell. If I don't do something foolish here to screw it up. One thing about these is, is if you screw them up, if you put a hole in there, when you get it on the stretcher, sew it up before you put it on the stretcher, and that way, ah, It'll dry like that and make it look more presentable, especially if you're going to a fur buyer. That'll give you a workout. I got an old coon in there to do tomorrow, so I'll give me another workout. You won't get much fat off down here by the by the hind legs. You will on the belly. You always have fat on the belly. There's the old butthole. We're gonna do that on the fleshing beam because I can't see what's going on there. down to the end it should push right on off if it doesn't cut it off with this stuff here see we're kind of pushing it all ahead of us right here
Okay. We're done with that part. Now we're going to go back the other way. Back to the other beam. Go ahead and uh, put this hide all the way down over it. You can kind of see. Let me see if I can move that camera over here. Okay. I need my knife. You can kind of see where the red meat is here. Right here. You gotta be careful here. You'll end up uh, just go real slow. See I just cut a little hole in there and I didn't want to. But it's very easy to this area here for some reason still gives me trouble. Put a small stitch in there pulls that up and you'll never even see it when you mount it. So. You can see the meat here, so I, I know I gotta I'm just gonna go ahead and keep get the meat off. much luck using my flashing knife up around this area. I don't know why, just uh, the big knife anyway. I always end up screwing something up, so. If you get a favorite knife, use that knife, because that's the one you're confident with. Let's see what we got here. This is what I call that gravel neck, right there. You can kind of see it lumpy. Why, I don't know. I don't know if we get anything off of here or not, but there's fat there. You see how I'm kind of cutting that off of there? I couldn't even get down there with that uh, fleshing knife. So I'm just taking a little bit at a time here. some meat right here. You can kind of see that. In fact, I can see it. So we'll just go ahead and peel that off of there too. Otherwise when that dries it'll be harder than heck to get them off. I thought I got that the first time. around so I can get some pressure on it. I've got to slice it off. I can't push it. Let's see what else we got. Looks pretty good. Looks a little bloody, but it's still good. We still uh, we got the meat off. That's the best thing. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna check these feet again. See if we got the toes out far enough. If we don't, we're gonna cut those off. 
you the bones there. I know we did a good job getting them, but you can always get a little bit more. Kind of just taking those right on out of there. And that's one foot done already. That's not bad. Okay, we'll stick with the back ones first. That way we'll know where we're at. Pull them out and just twist a little bit. You want to do it, I'll show you here when I turn this back inside out where you want to be. Right here. We're right down to the toenail there. You see that? Or just one joint above it, which is you can always get that other one out. So, but that's good enough for this. And here's the front one. I might do a little bit more here on this one to get it to go down a little bit. Just like that. Sure looks like the front joints are bigger than the back, I don't know. Anyway, got one more foot to do. One more front foot. Then we're gonna get this thing into a stretching deal. I'll show you how we do that. Just cut them off when you get there. Anyway, we've got these. Let me get them cut off here. Okay, let me get rid of this stuff. Okay, I'm going to go get a stretcher and I'll show you what we're going to do here. This is it. This is the stretcher right here. I'll show you. We're going to go ahead and uh, unscrew this here so it comes together. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close that like that. See that? Set it upright. Then we're going to slip our coyote skin over the top. 
Just pull her down and make sure the nose is up over the top here. Pull her down and just uh, just like that, just keep pulling it. And then what I do is I pull this apart and stretch this about as far as I can. And reset this screw. Just like this. And then let me go get a couple nails. What I do is I pull these down into place here and I'll nail them just to stretch them out. Doesn't take a lot to hold it. Just like that. Especially if you're doing this for a fur buyer. You want to get as much length on that as you can. That's how they grade them by the length. That's just your size anyway. Turn it over. And do the same thing here. Pull this down as far as you can. And just put a nail in there. You can use push pins if you want, but I always end up losing mine, so. I'm going to go ahead and just put a tack in this here, tail, just to hold it in place. And then uh, we'll set that up. Like this. I wish I would have got this done earlier. About five, six, seven, eight hours or overnight. You take this apart, close her up, pull that up over there, and uh, turn that skin inside out. Uh, we'll show you how to do that in the morning. Okay? And then that'll be done. It'll be ready to sell. And we'll groom the hide a little bit, and then we'll be ready. Okay, thanks for watching. Okay, we're going to take this coyote off the board here that we had. Remember the board? So, we're going to go ahead and pull the nails first. He's pretty stiff. I wanted to... I had left him overnight, and I really probably... I hope I can turn him. But... Now we'll take this screw loose here. Let me make sure that I can see you. So you can see me. Okay, just close that up. And hopefully, the coyote will come right off of there. Put your foot on there. See how that kind of just slides right off? So, now what we're doing, I'm going to put this aside. We are going to try to turn this coyote inside out. Okay? It's stiff, so I'm going to get a wire or a piece of rope. And we're going to go ahead and, uh, let's see. I might be able to use this right here, the old baling twine. Anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, put it through his nose or someplace here. See if I can find an opening here. The nose is pretty tough. So, I'm going put to put it through the nose.
Okay. Put that through the nose. What we're going to do is try to fish that down through the inside here. Then I'll reach up from the bottom and find that. There it is, right there. Now you can see here, I'm going to pull this. It's going to turn inside out. You got to help it a little bit. Go ahead and, and uh, just go ahead and turn it inside out like this. Just keep getting down around here. It's a little bit stiff around the head. So we just keep turning it inside out like this. I got a couple of spots here that are just a little bit wet around the ear. I'm just going to go ahead and put some uh, salt on there. It's not very much, it's just it'll dry it out a little. In the bottom lip, I'll do that too. But anyway, we're just going to go ahead and just keep doing this. Turn that inside out. Can you see that? Just keep working it down. And just pull that rope once in a while. I want to do this leg here. The legs didn't dry out overnight, so we're going to put a little salt on them. Down in the paws. That'll help that dry out some more. The legs, they're, they're hanging and they, they're not stretched out like this. So they don't dry out quite as good. They will over time, but I want to make sure that we don't have any slippage problems. So anyway, I'm still working on this, trying to turn this inside out. If you leave them more than a day or so, they're almost impossible to turn. They get so stiff. So. I'm going to go ahead and grab that rope. I'm going to grab the legs here. And it's coming. Slow but sure. Get down around this bigger part. It'll turn. coming. Doesn't look like it, but it is. Wherever you find a wet spot there that's going to be hidden inside, go ahead and put a little salt on it. And I'm turning those legs inside right now. So. Heater has been running in here all night, and that's one of the reasons this thing is uh, dry. And after a while, you can go ahead and pull this down when you get to the wide part, and just pull that right on through there. those out. I'll get that in just a minute. But I'm just showing you that I'm going to do some salt on the 
hind legs. Just up where they didn't dry. And then, what you also want to make sure is you do the tail. I split the tail all the way out, remember? So we're just going to salt the tail. And that'll help dry that out, too. Just run your thumb down along there. Move the salt down there. Okay. I'm going to try to get this foot out of here. Remember we salted that already. Give it a little bit more. That'll dry out nicely. Trying to find out where this leg is here so I can get a hold of it there. bottom lip a little bit because it didn't get didn't dry enough. Okay. Take the rope off. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put him back on the board. I'm gonna try to get this nose turned inside out again like that. Got that. Put him back on the board. Just like this. Get him on there fairly straight. Okay. That way when I brush him out and that. And we're going to go ahead and stretch that again. Okay. Now you don't have to tack this again. I've got a little board here I use for stretching mink on. Right here. It's about four inches wide and tapers out up here. We're going to put that in here like this, and that way air can get in there and keep drying that, just like that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and brush this out a little bit. we got to see where the, co where the cockle burrs are, get those out of there. Man, this guy was in a briar patch. He just was full of them. Anyway, we'll get combed down and that'll make him look. You get the mats out of them, they look 100% better. You see how that's starting to look already. You see that? That really starting to look better. So I'm just going to work on him a little bit, just combing him out a little. Nice long hair. Cockle 
number here would be high. Okay, now you've learned everything you need to know about skinning, stretching, whatever you got to do to a coyote, right? To get them. Boy, look at that hair. That's a good five inches, four or five inch hair. That's what people look for. They look for how long this hair is on the back here. Four and a half. Almost five. Some of that guard hair is almost five, which is really good. So anyway, that's that. You can go over him with a blow dryer. He's just a little bit damp, so I might go over him with a blow dryer. But... That's a nice coyote. Anyway, there you go. You've got a coyote from the carcass to the stretching, ready to sell. Or if you want to mount it up, you can go ahead and tan this, rehydrate it, tan it, and you got a full mount coyote right there. But anyway, that'll make a nice mount for somebody. Okay, we'll talk to you later.